welcome back to day three of Herbal Life. I'm gonna get started to fix my shakes and my tea. So let's go down. Okay, so I prepared all my stuff already and I'm gonna blend my milkshake a lot. Oh, I don't know why it looks like this. I put the same amount of milk I've been waiting for a while. I guess it's absorbing the milk. Because it looks like less than what I had in here. Maybe I should add a little more milk. We'll see. <clears throat> this is so weird. And the same amount of ice, huh? Did that come with the herbal What? No. No, I bought this at Walmart. And I had it sitting here for a few minutes because my son was on the phone. And I think it just absorbed into the powder. is ready. I got the coffee latte and the chocolate protein. And in my tea here. My tea, tea and mango ala. So I'm going to enjoy my breakfast and I will see you in a while. As you can see, another job is never done. Yep, laundry's still there. Getting these stuff out of the dryer. to see my social media I have videos and pictures on there I am on Yolanda Drebo I'll put it there on the, down here somewhere and this is Yoli Drebo but I changed it to Yoli's life just like my YouTube channel um, I just reali realized that I did not put the picture up yet on my channel so I will be working on that and also maybe work on an intro so yeah as of right now I actually am feeling really like ready to go kind of feeling and it's it's a healthy feeling it's not like a jittery kind of feeling like you know with certain um, diet stuff do to you 
um, especially for me. Sorry, excuse the noise. This is probably going to be my <laughs> my alone room because, oh my gosh, my kids are out there. They love to do karaoke. Um, it's just busy. But anyways, um, what were you we talking about? Oh, Herbalife. That's what I've been doing. This is the day three. It's been about an hour since I had my breakfast and I'm doing my routines of laundry, cleaning up, um, spending time with the kids and I feel like I can really do some cleaning. <laughs> I feel great, especially that I was talking about my health wise. I am, I have a very sensitive heart, I guess, because I mean, they say I'm really sensitive because I have a heart condition that has a, I have AFib. And um, I got it diagnosed at age 35. I was at work. <clears throat> I used to do overnights. I'm a caregiver. For those of you who don't know, do not know me, I worked as a caregiver for 16 years. I used to do overnights for like, mm, I guess nine plus years. I don't no longer do caregiving at overnights anymore. Um, but anyways, one year in 2012, I was at work, it was four o'clock in the morning and uh, I ended up passing out, out of nowhere, out of surprise, I was, n there was nothing wrong, you know, I was, I didn't feel dizzy, I didn't feel lightheaded, nothing, I was actually st standing there talking with another co-worker, and it was her birthday, and she asked me, um, if I wanted a piece of her cake, which is kind of crazy, because the... The assisted living that I worked at, I was by myself on my side. The doors were shut, you know, you could not hear me. The only people that can hear me is probably the residents that can hear really well. But, <clears throat> yeah, so she came over that day out of surprise that morning and asked me if I wanted a piece of her birthday cake. And I refused, because I actually was getting over a cold and I had like a, a still a little scratchy throat and um she's like oh well i just thought i asked you if you wanted a piece of cake and i said well thank you for asking i said i'm actually getting over a cold so i still have that itch in my throat kind of a thing and she's like okay and that's all i remember but she said that she said okay i'm gonna go and she walked out of my office walked around the corner and as she almost got close to the door to exit my building she heard a big bang so she rushed back over to my office and she saw me on the floor i was knocked out i hit my head and my shoulder on the door that um, you know, the doorknob, and because I felt, I think I was on my knees. I'm not sure how I was, but when I was com coming back through, when I woke up, I was um, on my knees, and I was, like, pulling my head because it felt like it was just going out of place. Like, I just had no control over my head, and um, it was hurting so bad, and it was just weird, like, um, I was trying to figure out how did I get on the ground? Where did she go? You know, the my coworker that I, she worked in the nursing home, and I was trying to figure it out. And I was still on my knees. I didn't know I was on my knees until I looked to my left and looked to my right, and I see my med cart drawers on my right, and I looked this way, and I saw my doorknob is like right here, and I looked down, and I'm still holding my head because it's hurting so bad. And I'm like, how did I get on the ground, you know? And um, this is going to be a long story, but this happened to me in 2012. 
2012, I I uh, was got up, I was leaning over my med card, still trying to figure out what's going on, you know, what happened, where did she go, you know, I almost felt like somebody attacked me because my head was killing me so bad, but she rushed back with the nurse, because good thing we had nurses in the nursing home, and um, they had already called 911, and they had me sit down, and they said, what happened, what happened, you know, so I said, you know what, I, all I remember is I was talking to her, and you asked me for a piece of cake, and I said no, because I was just getting over cold, and that's all I remember. I don't remember you saying goodbye or nothing, and she told me that she did say goodbye, like, you know, I said. And and I told them, I don't know, I woke up, I was on the floor, and I said I was holding, I, and I went to try to put my hands on my head to say I was holding my head because it was hurting, but when I went to try to put my hands up, I was only able to do this because this arm, I had no control, I had no sensation or, you know, I couldn't pick it up. I was like, oh my gosh, my arm. I'm like, my arm, I can't move my arm, you know. I was so panicky, I was so nervous, I didn't know what was going on. But like a few months before this happened, I was getting like this fluttering in my chest, like butterflies feeling. You know, it was like mostly right here and some right here. And then my jaw would just get this like kind of, I don't know, kind of shocky, kind of weird feeling. And I was like, it wasn't painful really, but it was just weird. And um, yeah, but I would just get this fluttering in my chest. I didn't know what it was. I went to the doctors too and they didn't figure out what it was. They were, they were starting to like, they were going to send me to get tested, but you know how that takes um, with insurance. So yeah, so then they rushed, they came and they rushed me to the hospital. Just checking my water. Uh, they rushed me to the hospital and they did all this stuff. They gave me, um, I forgot the name of the medication, starts with a D, to control me because when I came through, they took my vitals, my pulse was 45, my blood pressure was like, uh, I think it was like 104 over, I forgot what it was, but it was really low, and um, I don't remember how much my oxygen was, but yeah, and they, they saw that, I don't know if it was my blood pressure that was like, I don't remember what it was they were trying to do, but they were trying to stabilize my blood pressure and all that. They ended up keeping me there for about a week, uh, like a week, uh, doing tests, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, they couldn't figure it out, but they put me on a monitor, and as those few days that I was there, they said my heart had paused three times. So my heart pauses enough for me to lose conscience. And this cardiologist came into my room and told me what was going on. And they said, the best thing that they can do for me is to put a pacemaker inside. And I'm like, a pacemaker? I'm like, those are for old people. I work, with, I work for people that have those things, you know? And I'm like, I'm only 35 years old in there. You know, but they convinced me by saying, hey, you did not know this was coming on to you. You know, you, it was, you weren't given any kind of signs of like dizziness or anything. And they said, imagine if you're driving in your car with your kids and you were driving, you know, you would have passed out and you would have not only hurt yourself, but you would have hurt your family and others. So I was like, okay, okay, I'll do this. So it's been, I actually got my pacemaker replaced because it they last for, the batteries ten, last for 10 years and they had upgraded the, the pacemakers, which I have a Boston Scientific, which is right in here. Like I have two incisions. This was my, no, this is my new one. This is my old one. And um, they replaced it after 10 years. The they were gonna replace the battery, but then they replaced it, the pacemaker as well. They gave me an upgrade one, which has Bluetooth. <laughs> so 
um, it kind of helps to be able to be connected to a monitor at home. So if something unusual happens, it records it every 21 hour, it records my, my activity in my pacemaker. Um, and whenever there's something unusual, it'll send it to my doctor to let me know. And I think it does send every recording to my doctor just to you know let them know how I'm doing. So I have this monitor upstairs next to my bed. I, what else was it that I was gonna say about that? <clears throat> so I've had it since 2012. I get palpitations, that's what it was called, the fluttering. It's like with your heart, um, the top part of your, um, oh my gosh, I forgot. But anyways, your, your heart like goes like, your beat, it beats like this. One releases the, the oxygen, the blood with the oxygen to your brain. One sucks in the blood from coming from your body. And it just does this. That's how your heart beats. Bum, 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 bum. So what happens is my, I think my top chamber goes all crazy to release. I think it's really, no, the bottom? I can't remember, but I think it's the bottom chamber um, gets crazy. And it. the thing is they do not beat at the same time. They take turns. So when this one's finished beating, this one beats. So the thing that happens is this one, I think it goes a little crazy where it doesn't stop. That's what the fluttering is I'm feeling. And so this thing stops to release, to release the oxygen from my heart to go to my brain. And that's where you lose conscious because of the oxygen. And um, so yeah, and I'm on a blood thinner because I'm a high risk of a stroke and I'm a high risk of a heart attack, and I'm hot, well, high risk of blood, blood clots because of the stroke. So, and I'm on a blood pressure medication, which at first my doctor was kind of nervous to let me take any blood pressure medication because my blood pressure goes up and down. Because like I said, my heart, it goes a little, you know, what it, what it wants to, and Sometimes it's too fast, sometimes it's too slow. So that's why I'm at a high risk of a blood clot and a stroke. There's times my blood pressure will be too low, and there's times my blood pressure will be too high. So he ended up giving me a blood pressure medication because my blood pressure was like really, really too high, where I could get a heart attack. So that's where I'm at. And I will give you more details of my life in another video because I'm already running on 16 uh, minutes and I have not even done my lunch and the rest of my day. But yeah, so I'm actually feeling pretty good.